So today, what we're going to do, I think for those who can't necessarily go to a plastic surgeon, sometimes it's fun just to learn of some do-it-yourself techniques. And it can range from skincare to massage oils to you name it, toothpaste, deodorant. And so we're going to kind of talk about some do-it-yourself remedies at home that you can try. I know the big thing right now is everybody's using food and vegetable products and things like that. And so, you know, we're jumping on that bandwagon. We'll go ahead and we'll give you some of those. And then we'll talk about a few of the skincare items that we have in our brand, the Beverly Hills MD brand. And, you know, these are do-it-yourself treatments at home to address certain issues. And the nice thing is it's all organic. So, Everything that we're going to use just comes straight off the shelf. We're not going to go make you look for some weird concoction that you're going to have to put together because ultimately the way we come up with our skincare line is the same way. We try to use natural products and incorporate them with exactly what you need to fix those problems. So Mm -hmm. instead of finding harsh and abrasive materials or chemicals, we really try to go as holistic and as natural as we can. So yeah, this good. DIY we, we, is like as organic as it gets. Definitely. The skincare is, I think it's the perfect combination of science and nature because, you know, a lot of things are based off of botanical extracts and fruit extracts and things like that. But there's a limit to how much they can work. And so we kind of add the science behind it. So we're giving that a motor and allowing the active ingredients to work. So maybe you want to kick it off. I mean, we'll see what you got first. Okay. (laughs) So the first one we're going to talk about today is bubble baths. So (laughs) that's actually a great topic because I don't think there's anyone in the world that doesn't like to get into a bubble bath. I'll be honest with you, I haven't taken a bath in years. Mm -hmm. Um, But most women love baths and most men don't want to admit they like baths. So (laughs) My wife every day. That's We're going to kind of talk about a simple de- do-it-yourself kind of bubble bath that you don't have to use anything but the following ingredients. So what we need, so if you, if you want to write this down, I'm going to tell you right now, it's half a cup of warm water distilled, half a cup of liquid Castile soap. It could be really any flavor or scent that you like, and a quarter cup of vegetable glycerin or coconut oil. Um, the one thing we'd like you to do completely avoid are essential oils. Because the essential oils can kind of dry you out, actually, if anything else. So we want you to just use this. Uh, Mix them all together. And then, again, like I said, please avoid the following oils. Cinnamon, clove, oregano, savory, spearmint, thyme, and wintergreen. So when you combine all these things, they can be very, very irritating to your skin. So keep those out and just put in the ingredients that I said. So once you have it all set out, then you're ready to go for a soak. Go ahead and add an eighth of a cup to your warm bath water or pour in a little bit more if you're feeling like that day really calls for extra bubbles and (laughs) take it from there, right? You know, it's one of these things that I would say do it two or three times a week. It's interesting because research does show that Taking a bath a couple times a week is as important as your exercise routine. Almost like meditating. Exactly. You know, it's one of those things. And the good part, the ingredients that he listed, it's not, you know, he said, you know, really leave out some of those harsh essential oils. You can add a few drops of, you know, the lighter lavenders or chamomiles or things that are a little more soothing. And the whole idea, it's not just the mental or spiritual process of taking a bubble bath, but it's also hydrating your skin. And so the ingredients that he listed can help trap in moisture. You'll notice you do this two to three days a week and you'll notice your skin is more supple, definitely has a shimmer or shine to it. And so it just tends to look more youthful. So, And you can make this and put it away and keep using it. You will see that it kind of, it's kind of stick together, but if you take it and give it a good shake, then you can use it. You don't need to overdo it. A tiny little bit goes a long way. You have plenty of bubbles and you can have a whole lot of fun with this. You can also bring your kids into the bath with you if that's something <laughs> you do, because this is, again, it's au naturel. So you're not using anything that's harsh on the body at all. 
Definitely. And I think in between some of our DIY kind of segments here, what I'll do is I'm going to sprinkle in some skincare things, obviously they're from our brand, the Beverly Hills MD. And so you can listen to some of the ingredients. If you don't choose to use our brand, there are other brands out there, but you know, the good part again, about being a plastic surgeon and seeing all types of skin types and seeing a hundred different brands is that we kind of pick and choose which ones work the best and then try to modify them and amplify them. So going along the lines of really we're, we're trying to youthify, we'll put that as a, a new word, but we're trying to youthify the skin. So if we want that supple, glistening, healthy, youthful skin, you know, one of the products that's really great, I'm going to start just with the face, is our Titan and Bright and Restorative Facial Oil. And the way it's really different than most other you know, again, this isn't an oil that's going to clog pores or do anything like that. This is used for all skin types. But really what we're trying to do is repair the lipid barrier in the skin. And so the lipid barrier, you know, again, the combination of fats that are within the sugars and proteins that are in the matrix of the skin really provide that barrier and can trap in moisture. So if we're looking at trying to restore that, one of our active ingredients is really called L22 and it's you know, it mimics the lipid barrier of a 22 year old. (laughs) That's where it got its name. And so it really is composed of that particular balance of lipids in the skin. The next thing we do, we have something that's called BVOSC and that's an advanced form of vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is an excellent antioxidant. It's involved in the turnover creation of proline, hydroxyproline, which are really the, the main engines of developing a supple skin. We do have a few other things in there that are proprietary. One's called Dermaxil, one's Neodermal. These are all skin smoothers and skin plumpers. And then we have something called Aquacell. It hydrates the skin. And so using this particular product, we'll say, you know, I also forgot to say about the BVOSC, it helps brighten the skin. And so the whole idea, skin really looks older for a few reasons, but one is because it thins, dries, and pigments. And so if you can reverse the three of those, skin automatically will look younger. And so I think you use that on a daily basis every morning, and there's no doubt after four to six weeks, you will see a result. It sounds amazing. I'd much rather use that than the bubble bath. <laughs> because because I've, I'll tell you, all the, all the benefits you just told me about this, and I've used it, obviously, it's incredible. And people have used this from you know, younger patients of ours to older patients of ours. And we get the same type of feedback and they just feel like they have this new glow. They have an added glow because what ends up happening is when you hydrate the skin, really you just glow because it plumps, it brightens, and most of all, it really hydrates. By hydrating, and we're all made of water, our whole bodies are made of water. So the more water we can trap in, more moisture we can trap in, the better we look and feel. So do the bubble bath and if you want, use the... uh, the oil as well. Um, Amen, brother. I think this next do-it-yourself piece or recommendation is really coming from a question from someone, you know, one of our listeners. And so they said, I have these tiny red bumps along the back of my arms. I've tried exfoliating, but it doesn't seem to help. And it doesn't itch or anything like that, but it's more annoying and unsightly. Now, obviously I can't say for sure, without an in-person exam, but from what it sounds like to me, it sounds a lot like keratosis pilaris. And this is also known as chicken skin uh, because it tends to leave the skin extra dry, bumpy, and rough. And it's completely benign. This isn't a rash or anything else like this. So, you know, it's super common, totally harmless, but more annoying than anything. And so besides the sun, believe it or not, is being a treatment for this. I know most dermatologists, plastic surgeons will cringe, but it is a treatment. It really is because the skin is producing too much keratin, which is a natural protein, which then blocks the hair follicles and causing these tiny bumps to form. And it can't be treated like acne or whiteheads or other surface blemishes, but we can soften the skin. So what I'm going to propose is that we have this little remedy and we're going to mix together just four tablespoons of coconut oil, four tablespoons of sugar until it becomes the consistency of a thick slushy. You massage it on the back of your arms using circular motions until you know that area feels smooth and use this twice a week and you should see a noticeable improvement. But as always, 
check in with your physician, make sure it is in fact keratosis pilaris, and uh, so you can decide what to do next. But again, you use that blend of coconut oil, sugar, because really the sugar is becoming the exfoliant. The coconut oil is trapping in moisture and softening the skin. And you just smooth that on to usually the back of the arms or out the outer thighs or things like that. I would avoid using it on the face. You don't really see a keratosis pilaris on the face, but you can. It's most common on the arms and legs. So hopefully for those of you who suffer from that condition, again, this is just a fun way of not only improving the quality of the skin, it also helps you avoid just using sun as a treatment because as you know, sun is the main instigator of external aging and skin aging. And so the idea is to you know use that treatment judiciously. And if you don't have these products, we have a product that works very well for this. And it's one of my favorite products in the Beverly Hills MD line. It's called the skin polish. And the polish is an exfoliator. Some people think it's a little harsh. I think it's perfect. Exfoliator really is there to exfoliate, to basically clean off or rub off dead skin. We shed skin all the time. And with keratosis pilaris, what John's talking about, we really want to have that old skin go away and we want new skin to come. So instead of using a retinoid or something that's going to be a little harsher on your skin, and a lot of dermatologists will tell you, use an exfoliant and then a retinoid and then a moisturizer. So those are the three things. Our do-it-yourself kind of had those three things, but the skin polish is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I tell people to use it, put it in the shower, use it on your face and your body. And if you have the little bumps that people are talking about, which is, you know, KP, just put it on, on the back of your arms, really rub them around and you will see incredible results and you'll see them very quickly. Mm -hmm. This product is so good, it's normally just unavailable because we sell out all the time. Definitely. And I think you can even add to that the crepe correcting body complex because it's such a game changer on hydrating the body. So again, you know, we gave you something that's a little fun, DIY, but an easier treatment would be to have a particular cream or something like that for the body that's really got the the benefits of what we had talked about. So I think to combine our polish with the crepe correcting body complex, your skin, there's no doubt that it's going to improve, look hydrated and much younger. Absolutely. Thanks for the question. And we're happy we could answer it. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Which one do you want to do now? What else do we got? So uh, we, we could throw one out there that a lot of people have questions about. And it's interesting because over the years, people don't know what deodorant works and is still safe. I mean, it's interesting because if you've been one of those people that says, okay, I'm going to go use a, a completely natural deodorant, you realize that you really smell and it doesn't help. And, and, and I know a lot of people out there that try to use it and it just doesn't work. Now, if you have something called hyperhidrosis, this doesn't apply to you. It's not just <laughs> excess sweating. And we could talk about that at a different episode. But if, if you just want to use something that's more natural because there are products that we use in our deodorants that are really kind of harmful and in a sense, cancer producing. Mm -hmm. And things like aluminum or parabens or propylene glycol, all of these things that are put into the deodorants, they do help and they make you completely not sweat and smell very good. But at the same time, in the long term, especially in the rat studies that have been shown over the years, they could cause problems. So I am going to come up with, actually not come up, we've already come up with it. I'm going to tell you about our little do-it-yourself at home deodorant. And all you need is, and you can custom make this, so you can custom make the fragrance. So here we go. An eighth cup of baking soda, a third cup arrowroot powder, a half a cup of jojoba or jojoba? Jojoba. Jojoba <laughs> oil. I don't even know how to say it. Wow. Um, quarter cup of candelilla wax and 10 to 20 drops of essential oils of your choice. Don't forget your half cup unrefined shea butter. Oh, I missed the shea butter. <laughs> So then what you need to do is really melt the wax first. So we talked about the little half quarter cup of the candelilla wax. Then what I would do is use a double boiler, put one to three inches of water in a pot, bring it to a boil, dip the bottom of your cook cup holding the wax into the water. So we'll start this again, just so you guys can follow me. So take your wax, melt it in a double boiler, one to three inches of water in a pot, bring it to a boil, dip the bottom of your cup holding the wax into the water. 
Now stir frequently for about three to five minutes until your wax is completely smooth and melted. Then in a separate bowl, mix your baking soda, arrowroot, and jojoba yeah. <laughs> oil. Once that's nice and smooth, go ahead and pour your baking soda mixture into the melted wax and continue to heat until everything is liquefied. Then, last thing you want to do is put the shea butter in. And then remove it from the heat. And after a few minutes, go ahead and add 10 to 20 drops of essential oils of your choice. Final mixture should be thick, but manageable. Pour it into a clean, airtight jar. And there you go. You've got it. This should last you about three to six months, giving you plenty of time to sweat it out. So basically, use this, put it under your arms, sometimes even a little bit inside your wrist if you want paying attention to how your skin handles it. It's a good way to kind of see it right in front of your eyes if it's really helping or not. Love it. All right. For those of you out there, and this has been a big question for us, I'd say, you know, without doing surgical procedures or lasers or peels or things like that, what can we do to reduce the amount of dark spots on our face. One of the easiest things to do, we have a product that's called the Dark Spot Corrector. And I'll give you some of the actives. We'll kind of tell you why they work and really the reasoning behind it. And you have to imagine, I want to preface everything that we are saying. If you're looking for you know, a moderate change in your skin, it's not going to happen right away. It just you know, Listen, when you put on a moisturizer, you do see an immediate correction just because you've now softened the skin. But the idea is skin cellular turnover takes as far as collagen production, that takes six to eight weeks. So to see a result faster than that, that process speeds up a little faster than most. And those are super agers and things like that. So they can see results earlier, but let's just set up expectations right now. So the product I was talking about, the dark spot corrector, one of the main active ingredients. And this one, you know, I still am unsure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's the kakadu plum. I call this, it kakadu. <laughs> this, you know, it was so funny. Um, years ago when we first came out with this and we talked about it, there was someone from Australia that wrote in and wrote this long parody of how you really say it. And it was the funniest thing that I've come across. You know, the first syllable reminds me of this, and the second syllable is more like a ka from Boston. You know, it was the funniest little riff. So, but the reason why we use this plum is because it is a fruit that has some of the highest concentration of vitamin C in the world. And so we noticed this when we were traveling and you know we were burnt and we noticed that some of the guides were putting, they would crack this fruit and rub it all over the area that had gotten too much sun. And it was amazing at how the skin would feel at a relatively rapid time. So we're, we thought, all right, listen, <laughs> let's let's use this in a, uh, a skincare line. The second thing that we have is something that really is called Dermal RX. And all that does, it resurfaces the skin to kind of take the dusty layers off of the skin. So kind of just enzymatically debrides the outer aspect of the skin. So it automatically makes your skin look brighter. The next thing, Daisy Flower Extract. So this particular botanical reduces a melanin production. Now, less melanin, that means lighter skin. So the whole idea behind this is any abnormal pigmentation, this will help reduce that. And last thing, niacinamide, it kind of reduces the skin sensitivity. For those of you who have any sensitivities to these, obviously, these are not for you. But the whole goal behind this is you can either spot treat or, you know, as I do twice a day, I just use it all over my face and the back of my hands because those are the two main sun exposed areas and those are what make us age right off the bat. You should see the back of his hands. <laughs> uh huh. No, but like I'm a not, baby. I'm not kidding. Like, like a baby. Like a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but, but all kidding aside, the, the dark spot corrector was our first kind of baby that we started and it was so effective that we went away from using, again, retinols, which can have their downside. And this really, really helped because of the fact that it was a a very potent vitamin C kind of analog, if you can kind of, for lack of a better Mm -hmm. word. Um, And it works amazing. And it's very natural. So again, it's not abrasive. It's not harsh on your skin. So if you do have dark spots and you don't have time to go get a laser neighborhood uh, plastic surgeon, <laughs> just go ahead and use the dark spot. 
Um, moving along. Let's talk about one of the biggest fads there is out there. Mm -hmm. And that's um, apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was going for a while taking a shot of it every morning. And it's supposed to really kind of neutralize the acid levels in your body. It's supposed to give you a pH balance. It's also great in salad dressing. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're going to kind of flip it and talk about using it for your scalp. And I think that a lot of people can say that flaky or dry, a flaky or dry scalp is relatively common. Mm -hmm. I think more people have it than not. And there's always that, oh my God, what can I do to fix this? They use different types of shampoos. And, and I think everybody needs a reset. I mean, at some point, especially, you know, as you get older, I mean, not you, of course, but uh, as, yeah, as people get older you know, the hair becomes a little more dull. We start seeing those grays come through and the hair becomes a little more wiry and where it used to be soft. It had that sheen to it. I look at my five-year-old boys and my three and a half-year-old girl. I'm like, oh my goodness, uh, the hair yeah. is on point. But this is where this can help. And really what the main ingredient in the apple cider vinegar that we are using is the acetic acid. And what that does is just basically lowers hair pH levels. And I'm not going to get into scientifically, but I'm going to give you the do-it-yourself at home remedy. It's a mist that you can use after you get out of the shower. And here's how we're going to make it. So bring out your pens and write this down or pause it and go back. Um, a cup of apple cider vinegar, two cups of clean, warm water. Make sure it's not dirty. <laughs> 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 and an old shampoo bottle or spray bottle. I like how we wrote that in there. That's perfect. <laughs> so, Clean water, not so, dirty. So all you're going to do is just combine the apple cider vinegar, warm water in a bottle and shake it and mix it well. This is probably the easiest do-it-yourself mm -hmm. thing you can do at home. You're, you're going to smell like a salad, but, <laughs> but, but it's going to be amazing. No, all kidding aside. So, so what you're going to do is you're going to put it in, shampoo your hair as usual, rinse to dry, and then when your hair is slightly damp, it's important to have a little bit of moisture still. And that's something else I'll kind of talk about. For people that have real dry skin, best time to moisturize is when there's still a little bit of moisture on your skin. There's your little tip to take it home. But really, spray the apple cider vinegar solution throughout the hair from the roots to the tips. And then let it sit for five to 10 minutes. And then you can rinse thoroughly with warm water followed by your favorite conditioner. So this is something you keep in the shower. After you shower, it's still a little damp. Spray it, keep it, wash your body, and then go and put your conditioner on. And your, you know, your hair is going to feel lighter and appear shinier. And if you do this two times a week, you may even notice that your hair starts looking fuller. Give it a shot. And, you know, but there's also, I'm going to give you one other do-it-yourself recipe too kind of have as well. And those that you think you need a little extra love and this doesn't do it, you can go the extra mile. And just take a jar, take a quarter cup Himalayan ground salt, make sure it's Himalayan, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon coconut oil, a tablespoon of honey, and 15 drops of the essential oils of your choice. I suggest eucalyptus for a perfect stress reliever mm -hmm. because the stress starts in the scalp and it goes down. So combine all of it. You can store it, but at the same time, you could just use this on your wet scalp and it'll just, you know, make it a little more, I guess, you know, fuller. It'll feel like there's more moisture. More like and a deep treatment for your scalp as opposed to just kind of spraying it on twice a week. This is more like a treatment, leave in, and then you can wash it out. Absolutely. So I hope that helps. But the one tip I did give you, anyone who has eczema, especially when you get out of the shower, use anything, any type of moisturizer. You can use coconut oil. You can use our moisturizer, which I love, mm -hmm. and just put it on your body, especially the areas that you have the eczema, when it's still slightly damp, because you want to block in that moisture. Definitely. So, you know, again, sticking to our little pattern of sprinkling in some easy skincare versus semi-easy, which is the do-it-yourself, but you got to put it together. I would say one of my favorite products and I don't know what your thoughts are too, but I love the Rejuve GH. So imagine that this product is really, you know, the Rejuve GH, which RH polypeptide 7 is really a growth hormone analog. So this is where science really comes into play because growth hormone, as we know, just makes your skin younger. I mean, it increases the thickness of the dermis. That is one of the main contributing factors to why it helps for people who are taking uh, injectable growth hormone. So we decided, why don't we use this on the skin to see if we can uh, have similar effects? And it turns out you can. So the other thing that we combine in here is called holy basil extract. 
I don't know why it's holy. It's not blessed, but it's holy basil extract. But that's our botanical addition. And this is an antioxidant that's really high in rosmarinic acid. And that alone has anthocyanin in it. And so again, these are all these scavenge free radicals, which are basically little damaging agents in the body. And then also hyaluronic acid. So it comes in this little capsule that you just twist. It gives you the perfect amount in your hand. You wipe it on your face and... I'm telling you, at least for me, I think I'm holding age at bay as best I can. And this is definitely a contributor. Now, for something, let's say you don't want to use a growth hormone analog or anything like that. You know, we've been talking about body and scalp and things like that. Well, how about the face? This was a DIY fireworks facial that we put out over 4th of July weekend. And so, you know, obviously a lot of sun exposure and alcohol and things like that. And so we figured, all right, let's really help some people out for over the weekend to help them recover. And so it's really three simple ingredients. Two ripe kiwis diced and with the skin peeled off, obviously. One large banana and one teaspoon of organic honey. Organic honey is absolutely wonderful as, you know, a thickening agent for some of our peels and our facials and things like that, but it also has other antibiotic properties, antioxidant properties. So here's how you do it. Throw those three ingredients above into the blender. So you just take two ripe kiwis, one large banana, and one teaspoon of organic honey, put it in a blender, puree until the form smooth paste. And then drink it like a smoothie. <laughs> you, you can. That's the actual <laughs> great part about it. What you're going to do is smear the paste evenly all over your face, avoid your area around your eyes because that is a different subset of skin, and leave it on for about half an hour, 25, 30 minutes, and then wash the paste off thoroughly using warm water and a clean, fluffy washcloth and gently pat dry. And that's it. But here's why it works. For starters, bananas are packed with treasure, you know, age-fighting nutrients. So including B vitamins, vitamin A, and potassium. So you help energize the skin. And vitamin A is a natural exfoliant, a resurfacing agent. That's what retinol is based off of. And potassium, which helps deeply moisturizing the skin. Meanwhile, kiwi fruit contains almost two times as much vitamin C per serving as an orange. So if you can't find the kakadu plum, definitely go with some kiwi. As you also you know, know, and we kind of referenced earlier, vitamin C is a great natural skin brightener. And lastly, honey, we said it's a natural humectant. It kind of seals in moisture, added exfoliant, has that enzymatic portion to it, and also has some antibiotic properties to it. So try it out, especially after you've had a long weekend. This might be the perfect way to reset your face. Love it. You know, I eat my kiwis with the peel on. <laughs> and I was told that they actually all the nutrients are in the peel. So next time you eat a kiwi, try that. It's mm. a little furry, but it's delicious. <laughs> um, so let's move on to what are we going to move on to? The another skincare, or do you want me to do another DIY? Uh, listen, I think we'll just move with it. We'll be spontaneous. You let's choose spontaneous. whatever you want. So we're going to talk about blackheads, and I think everyone has Ooh. blackheads. And it's one of these things that you can have them when you're a kid. You can have them when you're, you know adolescent period, then you get into your 20s and 30s, even when you're in your 70s and 80s, people have blackheads. And blackheads are really, you know, one of these things that no matter what you do, sometimes they just don't go away because mm -hmm. you just might have oilier skin. Now, what are blackheads? And, you you know, it depends on what's causing it, but it's something that it's a pore that gets clogged by sweat or sebum. It could be an even a hair follicle that basically is just it's clogged and you need to somehow open it up. So I'm gonna give you a really kind of quick and easy do-it-yourself at home remedy for this. That's not gonna require a whole lot. And the main ingredient is always in your kitchen and it's baking soda. So baking soda is gonna be the real staple ingredient because it's known as what we call blackhead eraser. So when applied to the skin once a week, it can help slough away any of the dirt or junk that's there, or the buildup that's sitting inside those follicles. Now, don't apply it dry directly to your skin. I'm going to actually go over exactly what the mixture is that we, sh we want you to apply, okay? So here we go. There so you take your baking soda with warm water. Use a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? Find two tablespoons to two tablespoons of water, which is the perfect consistency to cover the whole face. 
Okay, if you're looking to use this on other parts of the body, obviously go ahead and double it up. Put more in there because you're gonna need more of a surface area that you're gonna have to cover. And then treat it like you would any exfoliant. So start by damping your skin with warm water and then use upward circular motions, work the baking soda mixture into your skin, focusing on the areas where blackheads seem to crop up the most. And after a minute or two, wash your skin with lukewarm water and follow up with your favorite serums, treatments, moisturizer. And we're gonna get into which ones we'd like you to use. Your skin's gonna look smooth and refreshed. And even though you notice a few of those blackheads have already started to dislodge from your pores almost immediately. So the pro tip here is use this blackhead erasing solution at the tail end of your shower. This is when your pores are nice and open because of all the steam and the warm water, which will make it easier for the baking soda to work. So if you enjoy a regular workout or your skin wavers between too dry or too oily, there is another kitchen staple that can help prevent pores from becoming gunked up, and that is green tea. So what's great is it really does help you look younger. It's a natural diuretic. And it has, you know, things like vitamin B2 and vitamin E. It's very similar to it. And it is also abundant in what we call polyphenols and it very high in antioxidants. So brew a big batch of green tea, let it cool in the fridge, and then pour it into a bottle filled with a spray nozzle. And then use it like you would a toner and spritz it all over your skin after cleansing each night. It's super easy. And it's an easy addition to any of the skincare regimens that we're talking about right now. So people are gonna ask us what type of green tea. You can buy any type of green tea, it'll all work out the same way. Just use it and don't overly do it. You know, you could do it every other night and I think it'll give you what you're looking for. But at the same time, after you do this, use your skincare regimen. That doesn't mean you have to stop using it. Mm -hmm. The next kind of DIY thing, it's a little fun. You know, for those of you, especially guys, you don't wanna get out and go get a manicure and things like that. Sometimes that dry, cracked skin on your feet just really needs a refresh. So here's a good old fashioned, just foot treatment. It's really easy. There's really three things that you need. And some of them sound a little interesting, but there are reasons why they're in there. So quarter cup of mouthwash, quarter cup of white vinegar or lemon juice, and a half cup of water. So, you know, in a bowl big enough to fit both your feet, obviously, combine mouthwash, vinegar, and warm water. You let them soak for 20 minutes, you make sure to submerge the entire heel and sole of your foot in the mixture. So while this recipe is fairly gentle, it may cause some irritation if the skin on your feet is extra sensitive or broken. If you feel any sting or discomfort, just go ahead and remove your feet from the bowl and thoroughly rinse them off with warm water right away. Once the 20 minutes are up, rinse your feet in warm water, dry them up, and then follow up with a nourishing oil like jojoba, olive, or even coconut oil, anything again to kind of trap in some moisture. So those ingredients themselves are enzymatically breaking down the skin. They're essentially taking those dusty, dry, cracked layers off in 20 minutes. And then afterwards, when you put the oils on, it's trapping in as much moisture as you can. So it can work like magic. The other scrub that we had originally talked about, you can use either apple cider vinegar, you can use lemon, anything like that. And you also mix that with some coarse sea salt. And this is where you create that paste, rub it onto the skin. You can wrap your feet for uh, 20, 30 minutes in some saran wrap and then do the same thing. Just essentially you wash with warm water. You gently exfoliate the rest of the skin using a warm washcloth, a soft washcloth. And then after there, you go ahead and hydrate with using the oils that I talked about earlier. I think, you know, it's it's interesting just to kind of go right into that because it's a little similar. It, it's do-it-yourself massages at home with your own massage oil, you mm -hmm. know? And it's interesting because as we get older, we have more aches and pains and getting a good massage is nice. But sometimes, you know, you can't, you can't go out and get a professional massage. So you have to kind of do it yourself. And helping and, boost the lymphatic system is always great. So that's why, you know, lymphatic massage and regular massages are great for the Very, skin. very important. Exactly. But sometimes, you know, you can't reach hard to reach areas. However, there are all these new guns that you can buy and they're massage guns that have really cool little heads on them. I'm going to talk to you about what each head does. And I'm going to kind of give you a quick tip on making your own massage oil, not only is it going to smell good, but it'll actually really help kind of get some blood flow going and make you feel a lot better. Okay. So basically why not buy it just from the store? And the reason we want this is first of all, you'll have to have complete control over the ingredients. You'll know exactly what's in it. I, I'll never forget. I got a massage once and 
the masseuse brought lavender oil and I didn't know and I didn't know I was allergic to it and all of a sudden I blew up. I mean, I literally drove to the, to the office and I had to give myself a shot because I had a really bad allergic reaction to lavender, which is always one of the best things to put in, <laughs> put in, these, in these oils. Um, but anyways, you, you really get to build your own type of oil that you'll end up liking and you can tweak it however way you want. So I'm going to kind of go through it. Some of my personally recommended would be the fractionated coconut oil to use as a carrier because you need a carrier to put the rest of the stuff. So let's kind of put this together and, and see what you need. So you need an eighth cup carrier oil, like I talked about, and it could be any of the carrier oils. Like there's a bunch of different ones. I personally, again, love the coconut. 10 to 12 drops of essential oils, your choice, whatever you like to smell, however way you like it to be, a liquid measuring cup and a dark glass container. So making this couldn't be any is easier. Simply measure your carrier oil, pour it into a dark glass container, add your chosen essential oils, shake well, combine, and you're ready to go. Now, here's the important part, the self-massage part. So self-massage, again, can be difficult because there's some, some areas that are harder to reach. So one major tip, like I said again, buy yourself a good massage gun. Now, these massage guns come with multiple attachments, three to four attachments. And, and sometimes, at least when I bought mine, I'm like, why do we have all these attachments? There's one that's like a ball, the other one's like a spike. And you can kind of make up what you want, but I looked into this a little further and this is how it comes out. The large ball is actually used on pretty much every consumer massage. So everyone has it. And it's designed to treat both large and medium group muscles. Very versatile, so you can use it anywhere. So I would recommend trying that on your legs and shoulders and see how it feels for you. Now, the other one is, the other attachment is the bullet. This is more angular, and it's great for shoulders and tight parts of your back. So if you have one particularly rough patch or a real bad knot in the area, you can use this. And then exercise caution. If something doesn't feel right, obviously, if your skin's getting irritated, like I said with my lavender, just stop it. So, you know, I, I recommend putting a dime size amount of your do-it-yourself massage oil, any part of the skin, waiting 24 hours. If it's not red or irritated, then you're good to go. I hope that helps. Yeah, I think it's so now if we look back, we've given you a little DIY tips and regimens for the face, the scalp, the body, the feet, everything from the external aspect for aging. But now I think what we'll do is maybe we'll end on two things that you can do for internal aging. So listen, one that's very easy, it's from our skincare line, it's called the Dermal Repair Complex. And we couldn't be more proud of this particular you know, product just because we've had overwhelmingly positive feedback from this. You know, I'll remember even, uh, you know, Kim Kardashian had loved trying it and it was great. And we've got all kinds of, you know, other patients and celebs and things like that, that have given us this positive feedback. The Dermal Repair Complex, really, if we look at some of the main ingredients, saw palmetto originally was used in males. It was for treating prostate. And so, but we, they noticed that the people who were using this actually had thickened hair, increased you know, improvement of the skin, better nails. And so what we did is we looked into that and used a much smaller dose, obviously, but it really destroys DHT, dihydrotestosterone. It's really responsible for acne and male pattern baldness and dyschromia, which is coloring of the skin, and what's called 5-alpha reductase. So it had anti-androgenic effects, the bad ones. MSM, this helps naturally strengthen the collagen strands hydrolyzed collagen, hyaluronic acid, and then we've got a bunch of powerful vitamins in there. A, B, we've got a whole B complex, folate, biotin. These are all things that can improve hair, skin, and nails. When you combine that with MSM, collagen, and saw palmetto, I think this product is amazing at helping repair the skin from the inside. If we're looking at something a little more fun, then let's go with uh, a smoothie. There are so many different things on the market that the idea is let's create something that's going to be, it's still going to taste good, but it's going to be great for your body and have potent nutrients that will really help improve the quality of your skin. So we'll start one cup fresh spinach, quarter cup of walnuts, one and a half teaspoons of ground flaxseed, half cup of frozen acai berries, or you can even use a packet of frozen acai puree. You can use a third cup of frozen cherries, 
and two cups of unsweetened almond milk. And then you can add as more if you need it. So the spinach contains vitamin A. Yeah, that's what we talked about. That was in the dermal repair complex. The quarter cup of walnuts, that ups your levels of vitamin B, that energy nutrient that was also in our dermal repair. Flaxseed helps wilted skin look a little more plump and bouncy. It's got a high concentration of omega fatty acids. And then the acai berries, it's one of the most powerful antioxidant foods. A boost of vitamin C and potassium, that's the cherries. And then almond milk, it's a rich source of vitamin E or as I like to call it, the elasticity vitamin. So just throw those ingredients into a blender, puree until it's nice and smooth and drink up. And then for best results, listen, make this four times a week or better yet, make it part of a daily regimen and you will see an improvement in the quality of your skin uh, just based off of those ingredients. It sounds delicious. <laughs> it really does. And again, you know, it's interesting what he just said. And we've said this for years, you are what you eat. And, it's, it, and it sounds like a very cliche kind of term, but it's true. People are dying to take something, a supplement that will make them feel young from within. And not just feel, but obviously look. And the dermal repair replenishes the things that we don't have. And people don't understand. Again, it's not a magic pill, but it is a way to kind of replace the things that we don't have that are the cofactors to collagen, to elastin, to all of the vital necessary um, nutrients, nutrients that we need. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking these types of supplements. And that's why everyone takes a vitamin D supplement because they know that the cells that we have are really in need of some of these extra supplements and we don't get them through food and we don't get them through our daily requirements, especially because people have different types of diets and people, a lot of the more incredibly gorgeous housewives that come into our office, they barely eat. And one of the truth, they really stay in shape and they have maybe, they intermittent fast, they don't eat till about one, then they'll maybe have just a smoothie and then at night they'll have just a little something. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying that there is, but if you can supplement it with those things that you're not getting in your diet, then wow, mm -hmm. you're really kind of halting the progression of aging and you're going to keep up with it. So when you do hit the ages of 40 and then 50 and then 60 and then 70, you look as good as you did 20 years before that. Yep. And listen, anyone taking any particular medicines that may interfere with the salt palmetto, I always recommend if you have any questions, run it by your family physician. And if they deem it safe, then you can go ahead and take it. If they don't, obviously, listen to them. This really wraps up our segment. It was fun for us. I hope it was fun for you. I think, you know, a lot of these things, you know, sometimes it sounds like work, but you have to imagine when you put these things together, you can store them. And so, you know, just by doing this once, it's kind of like pre-preparing your meals and all of a sudden you've got everything for the week. You can have some of these ingredients and put them together and you can have stuff for months, especially Absolutely. the hair and scalp and things like that. So, you know, I don't think they're that, that time consuming, but if you do feel that way, just you can revel in the fact that you will not just have it for one time, you can make it for several uses. And so, you know, we really are excited to help to teach you guys some of these natural things as well as you know, adding a little science to it. We're so thankful for all of you who are writing in and giving us your comments and questions and things like that. Keep them coming because we will definitely address them on future podcasts. So, And for you, for all of you that really liked some of these do-it-yourself recipes, we have a ton more. They're all on our website for the skincare line, beverlyhillsmd.com. Um, if you go down there, there's a blog. It'll teach you how to put on makeup. It'll teach you how to, you know, your do-it-yourself at home, you know, remedies, self-care, really some good stuff in there that we can't hit all of them on this podcast, but it's a great way for you guys to read. And some of the stuff we talked about today is on there as well. But if there's something we didn't touch on and you have questions, you can always send us your questions. There's a link that you can send it to us. You can go on our Instagram. You can send us our emails and we will answer them all the time. Definitely. With that being said, I just want to thank you again. This is, remember, Forever Young. I'm Dr. John Lakey. And I'm Dr. Pam and Daniel Poor. 